folks, Ray from DCRainmaker.com here. Today I've got five sports technology gift ideas that all cost less than 80 bucks uh, and that are available to ship today. Uh, basically meaning that if you forgot about this whole tree thing for this weekend coming up here, you can still get the gift in time and not get in trouble. Or you can just send this video to your significant other and probably accomplish the same thing. So with that, let's begin. First up on the list here, I've got the Skos Rhythm Plus. Uh, now this is an optical heart rate sensor that transmits across both AMP Plus as well as Bluetooth Smart. It doesn't store anything, but instead allows you to connect this to anything that you have, like whether it be a Garmin watch or a Sunto watch or a Polar watch uh, or an app on a smartphone or trainer apps like Zwift and Trainer Road. Uh, more or less, as long as it accepts AMP Plus or Bluetooth Smart, which is everything, um, then you're good to go. What's most cool about it though is the fact that it's actually just simply accurate. Um, when it comes to optical heart rate sensors, a lot of them more or less suck. Uh, this one is without question probably the best one out there. Uh, and it's also one that I depend on and use myself when I'm not testing something else. Now when it comes to usage, one of the things that's great about this is the flexibility and where you can place it. Um, it's actually pretty darn impressive. In fact, I tried once even under a swim cap on my forehead and it works just fine. That's not the recommended spot. Uh, the recommended spot is right here. Um, though I tend to place it up here, which as they say is also fine as well. What's handy about putting it up here is that then I can pull my uh, jersey or t-shirt over it and it simply disappears from view altogether, um, which is better than some of the other optical heart rate sensors that are on your wrist um, that isn't necessarily the best place for optical heart rate sensors to begin with. And then when you put them there and you have maybe a secondary watch or another bracelet or something like that, it starts to add up to be a lot of stuff. So this is handy, it's out of the way, and it's it just works really damn well. Um, so this costs 79 bucks normally, um, but it's 59 bucks right now. So if you go ahead and get it before the end of today, it's a little bit cheaper, uh, but it's definitely my pick for optical heart rate sensors. Next up, we got the bar fly mount. Uh, now many people have heard of the bar fly before, but may not understand what it comes with these days compared to what it used to be a couple years ago. Uh, so when it first was announced onto a, a crowdfunded Kickstarter campaign, it was essentially just the barfly mount itself and you put your Garmin you know, head unit into it like that and you're good to go. Um, but then a couple years ago they added in the connectivity for a GoPro, so you can put the GoPro on the bottom here. Uh, but now what's neat is in the box itself. So there's both a road version as well as a TT version. Uh, but what's cool is it actually ships with adapters for all the different bike units out there. So no longer you have to buy a new mount every time you want to change bike units. Uh, you know, if you want to go from Garmin to Wahoo or Wahoo to Mio, or whatever you want to do, um, you can do that all within one single box. Uh, so as you see on the side here, you've got Garmin, Polar, Wahoo, Mio, Magellan, Cati, PowerTap, Brighton. All those adapters come in this box right here, which is pretty darn sweet. Plus, it still includes the bottom connector for your GoPro. Um, and what's nice about that is it's compatible with GoPro as well as things like the Verb action cameras. Uh, and basically, pretty much every action camera on the market tends to use the GoPro mounts these days. Uh, so it's a heck of a lot easier than going ahead and buying new mounts based on whatever action camera you're getting. Now, whether you buy the triathlon version or the road version, uh, they're both 39 bucks. So I've seen them on Amazon right now for 32 bucks. Uh, that's a pretty sweet deal for a combo mount that includes all these accessories, which basically means that you don't have to buy a new mount anytime soon. Okay, so continuing down the bike path here, I've got the Orp bike light. Now what's unique about this bike light is just simply how easy it is to use. Most bike lights require like special mounts and stuff like that to get going. This just wraps around your handlebar. Like it's super simple. You have this rubber piece there, you pull it around, you're good to go. But more importantly than that, it's also a bell. So it's got the light portion as well as a bell piece. So you have this little tab right here. You can either whack it like this or you can pull it up like that and it makes a sound. So if I go and just do it like this, it's super loud. And the same goes for up like this also very loud. Um, it's impressive. Like I think, you know, one of the problems with a lot of bike bells is they make this little dinky ding ding sound. And quite frankly, that may be fine like for a random pedestrian, but it's not gonna help a car hear you or anything like that, especially in traffic. I use this all across uh, town here in Paris in the city. Um, and I promise you every single car hears this thing, uh, as does every pedestrian within a long distance. Um, everyone turns. Like if, if your goal is attention, this gets attention. Uh, and the bike light's pretty darn good too. Now on the light modes, there are a few different modes. You've got the solid on right there. I can go to off and the bike bell still works while it's off. So you can see right there, it still works. And when it goes and makes that beep sound, you'll see that it actually blinks a little bit. Um, what's handy about this though, is that you may not be using your bike light in the middle of the day, like on a you know sunny day in the summer, uh, at noon, you're probably not gonna use your bike light. So you can still use this with have the bell functionality. Uh, and because that bill is so big there to be able to hit, um, if you have to go and react really quickly to a car cutting you off or something like that, um, it's not some tiny little thing you've got to nail. This is just this whole thing and it's good to go. On the modes as well, you've got standard blinking and you've got a fast blink, uh, and then of course the solid. Uh, so certainly some flexibility there. And then you have a simple micro USB charging port on the inside. Uh, so nothing fancy, no complex connectors, anything like that. Uh, it makes it great for bike commuting just to be able to take on and off uh, into the office, not have to worry about it or any special connectors. 
Next up, we got the GoPro three-way pole. Uh, now the GoPro isn't included here, so it's just an entire pole setup, um, but it's called the three-way pole because it's pretty flexible in how you use it. First off, you got your kind of standard selfie stick functionality, so you can go like this, pop it out, put the camera there, take a picture of yourself. Um, it's nice because it adds a bit more length there, but you don't necessarily have to have all the length pulled out at once. Uh, it's also great because it's bendy like this, so you can see where if I just tighten up these knobs right there, I can keep it in different positions as they see fit. This is actually how I get a lot of different bike shots where I'm getting things like the underneath the bike and stuff like that while I'm riding. I'm just simply holding it like this upside down, and then it allows me to kind of wrap it back around again. Uh, so it's a little more flexible than your standard selfie stick. It's also a bit more compact because I can just pull like this and it pops in my back jersey pocket. It's great for running though, as well as just simply taking around the town. And what's cool about it beyond things like cycling is it's got this tripod on the bottom. So I can pop this out, I spin it back around again, and then I open the legs up and then I can put it on a table or any other hard surface and allow me to take pictures of whatnot using it just like that. I can still use this piece here. Or if I'm at the beach or somewhere where things are soft, I can put this together like this and just simply jab it in the sand and I'm good to go. Uh, so it's super flexible, I like that. Last but not least, while I do have a GoPro on the right now, you can use it just fine with a Garmin Verb as well because it has a standard GoPro mount up top. Uh, so you just pop this off and I use it back and forth between the, the Garmin Verb and the GoPro all the time or really any, any other action camera that supports the GoPro standard mount. Now the GoPro 3 Ray runs 69 bucks which yes is actually what they price something called the three-way pole, which is by the way, it's official name, um, but it is probably the one GoPro branded accessory that I actually do recommend buying. Uh, most of the other ones I think are totally overpriced and you can buy cheaper ones online for literally a fraction of the price. Um, but the functionality on this is pretty much unmatched and I use it across the board, whether it's GoPro stuff or Garmin stuff or virtually every action camera. Uh, so I would definitely keep on buying these. I managed to keep forgetting them in airplanes, but uh, hopefully that won't be the case for you. Next, I've got the Wahoo Speeding Cadence Sensor. Both of these sensors are magnetless, which means that unlike traditional speeding cadence sensors, there's no magnets involved here. It's simply this tiny little pod. So my left hand here, I've got the cadence sensor called the Wahoo RPM. And in my right hand, I've got the speed sensor called the Wahoo Speed. Um, now they're literally identical sensors. They just simply have different firmware on them. And they've gone ahead and rebranded one speed and one is RPM. Uh, now what's cool about this is like the Scosche Rhythm Plus, they're dual AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart Compatible, which means they're transmitting across both of those channels at the same time concurrently. So you can use it with your Garmin as well as a Strava app or virtually any other uh, fitness, device out, fitness device out there will support this just fine. With the Cadence sensor, it attaches to your bike crank uh, just on the side using basically two zip ties and a little rubber pouch. Uh, and it works pretty well. And then on the speed sensor side, it uses a rubber mount to attach to your wheel, either front wheel or back wheel. Generally, the back wheel is best because of the fact that that works well in a trainer, uh, whereas the front wheel in most cases is stationary. Uh, the reason you might want a speed sensor is, of course, for trainer usage, but also in cases of mountain biking or things like that where you're going to be doing a lot of switchbacks where GPS distance may not be that accurate, uh, a speed sensor is a bit handy. Now, both of these sensors cost 40 bucks individually, but if you buy them as a package, they're 70 bucks, which isn't too bad for getting two sensors at once that are both magnetless and can be moved around bikes relatively easily. Okay, so there you have it. Five gift ideas under 80 bucks, and more importantly, five gift ideas that I truly and genuinely do use every single day. Um, I've bought these all myself with my own money. So I use the Barfly stuff on my tri bike. I use the GoPro three-way pole virtually all the time, every day, vacations or uh, blog stuff. I'm using it constantly. I'm using the Scosche heart rate sensor for basically capturing my heart rate data when I'm not testing something else. And then I use the Orp bike light on my bike when I'm riding around town. Uh, those are like all staples of my day in day out use. And the same with the Wahoo sensors. I've got that on a lot of my bikes here uh, just because they work really well and they're easy to move around. Uh, so there you go. Everything I've mentioned is again, 80 bucks available today and it can ship in time for the tree here before the end of the week. With that, don't forget to whack that like button as well as the subscribe button. There's plenty more sports technology goodness coming up in just a few weeks. Uh, we've got CES uh, the first week of January here, which will be awesome. There's tons of new stuff coming out then, of course. Uh, lots of gadgetry, so you do not want to miss that. Have a good one.